Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Tuesday, June 14th, 4.50 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. State of the market, we are in a correction. We've officially hit bear market levels as of yesterday's close after teasing several times over the last couple of weeks. Not that that really matters. I mean, does it matter if you're down 18.2% or 20.3%? No, that's a pretty severe correction. And if you're under the 200-day moving average, you better be uh, on guard and, and uh, hopefully have gotten most of your exposure either hedged or out of the way. Uh, that's when markets get extremely dangerous. The 200-day moving average is the line in the sand. A lot of professionals use it. Uh, and it is kind of widely seen in the uh, technical industry as the line between healthy and unhealthy markets. So when we get below there, uh, we quite correctly take caution. So let's check the trend gauge over here. No surprise that you can see a lot of red market leaders to red. Really, we had nine survivors from the 21 over 21 list. We'll take a look at those charts, the rest of them except for one or two have broken down. Uh, short term, this is saying where are the major, the five major indexes relative to their short term 21 day exponential moving average? They're all lower, so we're on bearish downtrend. Same situation for the medium term 50 day moving average and the long term 200 day moving average. Uh, yeah, red means stop on a stoplight. It should mean that for uh, people that want to protect their portfolios too. So what just happened today? New correction lows. And tomorrow, uh, the Fed will be raising interest rates. It was assumed, uh, based on what Jay Powell said, they were thinking 50 basis points in the June meeting and in the July meeting, but that was before the really bad CPI data came out. Uh, last Friday, and since then, now we've been uh, it kind of came out yesterday. They put out the smoke signals and quite a few of the media outlets that they're going to do uh, at least 75. Some people are speculating that they'll do 100. Fed knows, and Jerome Powell learned the hard way that you don't want to surprise the markets, you should have uh, the markets prepared for whatever, uh, whatever it is that you're telling them. Uh, or the, what you're going to announce. It's kind of like the old saying that uh, you don't want a lawyer in a trial to ask ask uh, somebody on the witness stand a question that they don't already know the answer to. Uh, same situation, Jay Powell got out of his lane in December of uh, 2018 and the market's corrected uh, nearly 10% in uh, December and 20% overall. That was the prior bear market before COVID. And uh, of course, as I mentioned, we hit bear level, minus 20% bear level in the S&P 500 on Monday. So uh, mixed bag today, G6 has been underperforming quite a bit, but it was uh, struggled to, to a green close today. S&P 500 kind of all over the place in a less than 2% range, but really fast moving uh, chop today. If you could, you could take a glance over. At 3.30, we were down a percent. I glanced back at 3.40, and uh, we were almost positive and then sold off a little bit more. Very fast chop. Not not a market where if you're a trader, you can find much of an edge, uh, especially, uh, especially given the, um, I mean, the volatility is just uh, off the roof. People are scared. Uh, funds are scared. Nobody really knows what is going to happen with inflation. That's the big wild card. Uh, and with rampant inflation that you can't, that is unchecked as of this point, nobody really knows what anything is worth or is going to be worth six months, three months, six months, a year from now. So it's a pretty big deal. Dow down a half percent, mid caps down 0.4%, Russell 2000 down 0.4%, 60-40 global diversified stock and bond index down 0.38%. In-house protection, we're down just a fraction, 0.08%, but our um, our spread between what the S&P is doing and our return reached uh, the highest it is uh, year to date, uh, about 1,350 basis points. So let's get to the charts. Before we get to the charts, 
let's take a look at this wonderful team here at Revere. Trend following is what we do. When the markets are going up, we participate. When they're going sideways or consolidating or hinting at a correction, we lighten up. When we uh, roll over and go lower, we maximize capital protection tactics. Seems common sense. It's what you do with every other aspect of your life. If uh, something's going bad, you take action. But Wall Street has tried to condition the populace to stay all in all the time in the markets. Why? Because if you're not in, they don't get paid. That's a conflict of interest. Uh, we don't do that here at Revere. We're completely transparent. No fees except for what we charge for assets under management. And if you're interested in this approach, give us a shout. You can email Dan, Tim, Hunter, Mural, or Don at revereasset.com or call 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-5932. Let's get to the tail of the tape and the charts. And let's get the charts blown up here a little bit. Uh, get to the S&P 500, and uh, you really don't have to blow up the chart to see the carnage uh, that's happened the last three days. This is day four. Certainly, the rate of change down has stopped, but late last Wednesday, uh, sorry, late last Thursday, we broke through this tight trading range that uh, it was on day nine off of the lows. And then Friday, the big gap down on CPI. Monday overnight, uh, people decided that it was they weren't finished selling stocks. So another gap down and close at the lows, entering the official bear market on Monday, 6.13, down 3.9%, ugly day. And now uh, new lows and new closing lows for this correction today. So... We've made it clear what we did. We lightened up a bit last Thursday, got out of the rest of the way on Friday, and uh, flipped net short going into yesterday. We got uh, off of our shorts as we got extended 10 plus percent below the 50 day moving average, uh, wrapped up our profits there. Today, uh, we sold our last TBT piece for about an 18 percent gain. Now, the only thing we're left with is GLD and an inflation protected short term bond VTIP. So uh, there's your S&P 500 chart. Let's get to the tail of the tape here and tie this all together. Nothing's changed with the headwinds. Uh, strong US dollar, although the dollar was, actually the dollar ended up positive today. It was weak early, uh, but that's a big issue. Let's go to that chart here. We were considering going long the dollar uh, but we're concerned about CPI last week, but all it did was gap up uh, Thursday, sorry, Friday. The, look at this nice consolidation off the 50 and the 21. It got our attention on the 9th. The 10th, we gapped up uh, on Friday after CPI and followed through strength Monday and Tuesday. This looks very similar to the TNX, the 10-year uh, chart. This is the yield uh, move up Friday. After the CPI data came out, gap up Monday, uh, not a gap up today, but closed at the highs. And when we're in TBT, which follows the rate. So if rates are going higher, TBT is going higher and uh, very extended from the 21 day over. Uh, it was over 11 percent, right at 11 percent when we took uh, we took the profit. So wrap that up. Uh, we're still very interested in this, but uh, let's see what happens with a pullback after the Fed. Maybe just some front running the last couple of days with the anticipated raise uh, by the Fed coming. But regardless, odds favor a pullback. We're very extended. We took our uh, money off the table there. So uh, inflation, very obviously CPI. This is what really sparked the latest uh, downtrend with the terrible numbers on Friday. You've got the Fed tapering and reducing their balance sheet, interest rates rising, Russia, Ukraine going on. Um, put call ratio spiked around uh, above 1.3 Friday and Monday, pulled back a little bit today to 1.09. VIX is elevated at 32.5. Fear and greed were at 17. Extreme fear there. Uh, we went to the bear case on 610 with the breakdown, break below the 21. Um, some news today. Uh, FOMC tomorrow, as I mentioned, maybe a 75-point 
uh, basis hike, 75 basis point hike, uh, we'll see. We'll be, it'll, be, it'll either be 50, 75, or 100. That doesn't matter as much as the reaction to it is what matters. So uh, as always, we'll keep an eye on what's going on there and how the charts react to that. So this morning, OPEC cut their supply forecast, not good, oil spiked. Uh, also before the open, PPI May was in line up 0.8%. Bad. April was at it was only 0.4 percent, so a doubling from April. Annualized up 10.8 percent. I think this is a little bit below the expected annualized level. But then in the afternoon, a genius senator uh, who's mad at the oil companies uh, proposed legislation for a wind tax, windfall oil tax of 21 percent plus an additional excise tax. So, if a company is may you think they're charging too much and you tax them, do you think that's going to make them? charge less no come anybody with an economics even a, a little bit of an understanding for economics understands that when costs go up whether it's taxes or whether it's your uh, input costs you're going to pass it on to your consumer to the extent that you can so raising taxes on oil companies just raises the cost of the the end product so only an idiot would uh, propose that uh let me be clear about that. So coming into today, what we're watching, S&P 500 support this 3695 to 3700 level. That's going all the way back uh, to, let's take a look here, going all the way back to January and March 2021 pullback lows on the chart. That's how far back we're having to go uh, to find some support as all the recent support has broken down uh, on the charts. So how did we do versus that? We tested it and held resistance of 3,800. Uh, when I put this together last night, that was tested overnight. That was our most recent breakdown level, 3,800. Let's go back to the S&P 500 here, uh, and you can see that 3,800 held. Uh, there's 3,900 down here, 3,800, which was the spike low. When we put in the last uh, low on 520 before the most recent bounce that has ended up failing. Uh, so that was um, tested overnight as it was broken yesterday. So now that 3800 level, which was support, has turned into resistance. Always be wary of when uh, support breaks to resistance. That's not a big, that's not a positive, quite obviously. Um, so we're watching that, tested it overnight, and that's when we started pulling back. We're actually up after hours. Uh, until I went to bed, we were very green. I woke up barely green. So the action today, fast chop with lower lows on a five-minute chart doesn't really – uh, you can't really appreciate how quick things were moving today by looking at this chart. But it wasn't really a wide range, but it was a, the ranges, the moves were very fast uh, within the range today. So – uh, ATR on the S&P 500 has spiked to almost 2.8%. That's the highest I remembered in, in uh, quite a while. And today was the fifth straight down day. We'll see what the reaction to the Fed uh, brings tomorrow. Strong today, shippers, fertilizers, transports, because FedEx, I showed that chart early, FedEx added three new board directors. There's been some activists after them to get their act together. Uh, they came up to the 200-day moving average, three new board members, and they also increased their dividend by 50%. That was good enough for a 14.4% gain on FedEx today and a boost to the uh, transports. Retail and banks, positive oils, as I said, started out uh, strong, faded after uh, the idiot senator came out proposing a windfall tax on oils. Uh, week today, bonds, natural gas, as that uh, terminal that had an explosion last week said they they won't be fully back online until late 2022. That be, that means that uh, nat gas is going to back up in the country, in the U.S., because we can't export it uh, as much as we used to. Uh, nat gas in Europe is spiking. Nat gas in the U.S., UNG down 16% today. Uh, gold, silver, and gold and silver stocks continue to be no safe haven as they lagged, as well as staples, utilities, healthcare, and RE. It was actually the big, uh, the big value areas that underperformed today. Big growth, SPYG, was actually green on the day. So in the portfolio, I mentioned we sold our TBT. This takes our adjusted beta, volatility adjusted beta, to just basically flat up 0.01. We've got 10% in that V-tip and we've got 5% in gold and gold is not doing what I expected it to after this positive outside reversal 
on Friday. Uh, looked like a change of character, but this is actually looking more like from failed moves come fast moves in the opposite direction as we test this 168 low. Last level of support there, we're expecting that to hold. If it doesn't, we'll be getting rid of our gold position. Bottom line, new correction lows, Fed rake height tomorrow. Uh, we'll see what the reaction is. And uh, you can see all the various levels that have been broken over the last uh, week. Really an ugly time in the market. New closing lows at 37.35. Uh, you can see the resistance, the, sorry, the support underneath it, this 36.63 to the 37.23 level. Uh, we actually got inside the 37.23 level today with the low of 37.05 and bounced. And all the way down at 35.05 is uh, the 50% retrace of the entire COVID rally. This is also brings historical PE ratios back in line uh, from a normal, from a uh, reversion to the mean standpoint. Would not surprise me at all if we get there. The only way we don't get there, in my opinion, and I don't like to give opinions, but I see the trend, I recognize the trend, I have expectations, and until we see some improved inflation data, uh, like I said, nobody really knows what anything's worth. Let's go to the rest of the indexes. Here's the NASDAQ 100. Actually finished close on the day, but did make new correction lows. Dow Jones Industrial Average. Here's the diamond, new correction lows. Mid caps and small caps led for a while, but those have broken down uh, also. And uh, making new correction lows. That's mid caps. Here's small caps, IWM. 168.90 low was 167.74 new correction lows also so let's take a look at uh, some charts here and I want to go through the charts of the nine survivors from last week's 21 over 21 list and see how they've fared this week and I think you probably know what I'm hitting at here let's let's um, let's sort them by uh, inverse return today and let's start with AT&T held up very nice showing some relative strength but just that quick uh, down 10% off its highs in about two weeks broke the 21 broke the 50 still above the 200 day moving average yeah I guess it's considered safe yeah I guess it's got a nice yield uh, but you gave up your yield in two weeks there Chevron oil stocks uh, coming under a bit of pressure over the last week uh, broke the 21, undercut the 50, was challenging the 21, which has rolled over today before that um, uh, that uh, announcement of possible regulation of big oil by increasing their taxes uh, came out. So it closed below the 50-day moving average. Ulta broke the 21, broke the 50, bounced at the 200-day moving average, breaking that cup and handle. Uh, Exxon Mobil, stronger than Chevron, right below the 21. End phase broke the 21, sitting right on the 50 and 200 day uh, moving average. ON Semiconductor sitting right on the 50 and the 200 day moving average. Arch Coal broke the 21, sitting on the 50. Devon Energy broke the 21, bounced from the 50 yesterday. And finally, little old Zoom. The only one still holding above the 21 day moving average. Watching this one closely, it's really acted well since its earnings report. Let's go to a 30-minute chart on here. Uh, you can see the move up. This was on big volume on earnings, and then it just continued higher. Then, of course, the market uh, started going lower. Hard to see the relative strength here uh, because you've got all of this overhang here. Uh, from the big drop down from over 400 to 100. But over the last three months, Zoom's relative strength is an 89. Uh, you can see with one of the, with this enhancement here that IBD has done um, technical. Uh, here's your moving averages. Three month relative strength is at an 89. Uh, pretty good stuff there. So if uh, if tech stocks come back into vogue because this now has a reasonable PE of 22 and they make money pretty good pretty good returns here on a per share basis uh, they 
was supposed to peak in uh, 2022, but this they beat on this last earnings report and actually raised guidance. So it's got it's got Wall Street's attention again. Uh, I would not be surprised when the June numbers come out for a number of mutual funds if it didn't stop its decline uh, and start going, start increasing the number of funds because that chart shows me something that short term is being accumulated. That's going to wrap it. As always, love to hear from you. Uh, Email DonnaRiveraAsset.com. You can phone 855 Real Wealth. So big day tomorrow with the Fed. Uh, Tim will have your Wednesday video, Hunter Thursday. I'll be back on Friday. So wrapping up Tuesday, June 14th. This is Don Vandenborg telling it like it is. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.